No, now, Taki, you don't expect me to leave you alone in this lab now, do you? Our project... Oh, for goodness sake, Josh, don't you think you're taking a things a little bit too far with this whole top-secret project you've been working on? It's just some new game. It's just some new game? Just some new game? May, we are talking about the next generation of gaming technology. A quantum leap! In the world of gaming. And besides, the university has made it very clear that they don't want to take any chances of a security leak. We are in a contract to keep this all a secret. Exactly! So yeah, you can imagine why I don't want to leave him here unsupervised, right? At these, at these words, I noticed Candy's eyes seem to be lighting up. Right before a devious smile quirked her lips. Uh-oh. But these things disappeared almost as quickly as they appeared, even as she shifted and put on a look of pure pureness. Pure, pure, whatever. That's true, but, you know, if it'd make you feel better, I could keep an eye on Taki for you. This caught my parents' attention, as well as prompting a muted groan from me. For a while, it was true that an unguarded opportunity to scope out Dad's lab was precisely what I had hoped for, and I was hoping for more of an opportunity to be un completely unguarded. Candy had just made it clear that she shared my father's desire to keep this project a secret, and it was obvious that hey, she had other plans in mind for enjoying my company. You sure you can manage that, Candy? No offense, but I know my son, and he could be quite a handful when he puts his mind to it. Of course, Professor. Besides, I'm sure you're worrying over nothing. Taki's always stuck me as being quite the gentleman. There, it's settled then. Without another word, Mom began ushering Dad towards the door, despite the fact that he clearly was none too happy about this. Taki, you better promise you won't go snooping around in here, or try and sweet talk candy into doing anything, you understand? Don't worry, Dad. Scout's honor. But you were never a scout. Candy, you better keep a close eye on him. Don't let him get out of your sight. Not even for a second. Oh, come on. I'm sure Taki knows better than to go snooping around. When Dad made a face at this, Candy just smiled in a reassuring manner. Don't worry, Professor. I'm sure I could keep Taki suitably distracted. Oh, no. Trying very hard not to pay attention to Candy's last statement, I simply watched as Mom's escorted Dad out of the lab, with him still protesting the idea of simply leaving me in his lab. For despite Candy's reassurances, he was certain that doing so would tear tetramount to leaving a pack of starving wolves in a hen house. And as for me, I decided that since Dad was certain I was going to snoop around his lab, why should I disappoint him? But before I could even consider where to start snooping around, I once again felt two voluptuous masses of feminine flesh pressing hard against my back, hot breathing upon my neck, and two slender arms snaking about my upper torso. And here I thought they'd never leave. At this, I felt my entire body going rigid, with certain portions even more so. Whoa! Okay. Uh, Dr. Hughes? What did I tell you, Taki? Call me Candy. Jumping slightly at the way Candy was speaking with a tone of voice that was well past the flirty stage, I quickly pulled out of her gasp, grasp, gasp, grasp, and turned to face her. Uh, uh, Candy, what are you... Candy just smiled much more deeply as she opened her lab coat a bit more, giving me a even better view of her exquisite hourglass of a figure. Isn't it obvious? I'm doing precisely what I told the professor I'd do. I'm keeping you distracted. I'm pretty sure that isn't what my dad had in mind. He never said that I couldn't. I considered arguing this point, but as Casey Candy closed the gap between us, I realized that there was no point in that, so I decided to try a different tactic. Uh, shouldn't you lock the door? And, you know, <laughs> Mom and Dad will be back soon, right? The doors lock automatically, so there's no problem. And as for the professor, I'd say it'll take about five minutes or longer to get to the nearest shower, and at least ten for him to get cleaned up and dressed and all the rest of it, and another five to get back here. That's plenty of time for us to have fun. 
And I've wanted to get my hands on you for quite a while. Oh my god. I can't handle it. I was about to protest this. But even as I sputtered and sluttered. Sluttered? Stuttered. Candy <laughs> sluttered. Candy reached up from the front of her shirt took hold of the boundaries around the buttons, and with a grin, ripped the top open, damn, causing her quite exquisite breast to jump free of the restraining cloth, causing my eyes to bulge and jaw drop as her enormous, enormous endowments bounce a bit more, and I continue to bounce about in her their bra as it stowed up on me. Ugh, Candy, I, I don't think we should be. Candy planted her lips squarely upon my own to cut me off. A firm, potent kiss that caused the heat to rise throughout my entire body. Jesus. And while we were in contact for only a second or so, I felt like it felt like a bit longer to me. Now, was that so bad? Uh, no, it wasn't bad, but we really shouldn't be doing this. Says who? I'm an adult, you're an adult, and I'm not that much older than you are. So far past the flirting stage, I was really starting to get anxious. I carefully backed away from Candy with my hands held up in protest. Candy, no. I mean, this is a bad idea. We could get caught, you could get fired, Dad could get in trouble, and... You worry too much, you know that? Now why don't you just... No! I... Huh? In that brief instant, Candy had quickened her pace, immediately bridging the gap between the two of us. And I had still been holding my hands up in protest. Oh, I'm grabbing them, aren't I? As a result, those same hands had managed to land squarely upon the unforgiving sexy scientist's ample breasts before I even realized what was happening. And as soon as I realized what was going on, I felt my entire body burn with hormonal fire as I grasped and gasped in confusion. All the while, Candy just smiled naughtily. Now you're getting into the swing of things. I jumped back and off of her like I had just found my hands on an open fire. I... sorry, I Candy, no. This is a really bad idea. Really? Because from where I'm standing, it looks like you think this is a great idea. Or at least, part of you does. Ugh. Wincing in realization as I felt my own body straining inside my clothes in response to all this stimulation, I tried very hard to figure out what the heck I should do. Unfortunately, Candy was quick to adva take advantage of my hesitation, and once again glided upon me. While I was still stuttering and sputtering, she took her held of my wrists and guided my hands around her voluptuous form. Well, that, I mean, that word fits. Now, now, Taki, I'm not trying to make you uncomfortable. Well, you're succeeding anyway. But I really do find you quite attractive, sort of like your father in a way. Except you take better care of yourself, and you're not already taken. At least... The professor never mentioned you having a girlfriend. This tactical thrust took me by surprise. I mean, well, I'm not a big exercise enthusiast, but I'm not obsessive with games to the point where I left my body, let my body wither away to nothing, so I do keep in shape. And she did have a point. I didn't have a girlfriend. Well, uh, no, but still, this is awfully fast, don't you think? Maybe. But since you hardly ever come to the university, I thought I'd make the most of the opportunity. Oh. Before I could say anything to counter this, Candy again placed her lips upon my own and kissed me. And not just a kiss, but a kiss. Wink. Hot, passionate, and potent. And I realized that I had a serious problem. I would have... I would have to have been pretty naive to think that I was the first guy that Candy had gone after. She was just way too big of a flirt, and way too willing, and there were just way too many guys roaming the halls of the university for me to think that she had just been biding her time on my account. Also, I had to realize that some folks might call me naive or romantic, but I really didn't want my first time to be like this. I had always fancied the kind of things that happened either in my games, or in my romantic novels, or whatever. Boy meets girl, or vice versa, they like each other, they start going out with hanging out with each other, their relationship improves until nature takes its course. But this this had the feel of me just being another score for Candy. Like I was another point in some kind of game she was playing. Even worse, I was having a harder and harder time trying to think. Candy had wrapped one of her legs around my frame as I struggled with the situation. 
I realized that she guided my hands so that they were cupping a posterior that so many lucky guys would likely f kill to get their hands on. Her ample breasts were pressed against my own chest, with her own flimsy barrier of silk and my own skirt, skirt, shirt, keeping me from experiencing them all in all the glory. As the situation continued to escalate, my body and candy continued to stumble around the lab, right up until my heel caught something on the floor and my center of gravity went over the edge. And since Candy and I were so thoroughly intertwined, we both were sent staggering backwards, arms flailing about as we tried to recover, only to find ourselves past the point of no return as we were sent crashing to the floor. No! Ow! Oh, I didn't mean for that to happen. I agreed with Candy, and might have given a voice to the sentiment if not for the fact that oxygen was in short supply, courtesy of the fact her that her considerable blur arrests were pressed against my face and cutting off my ability to breathe. Ironically enough, this reality was exactly what I needed to clear my head of hormonal overload and start thinking with stuff between my ears. Grabbing Candy by her waist, I managed to push her off, enough for me to allow it's enough allow me to suck in a deep breath and then slide out from under her. Whoop, getting out of here. Which was all I had the time to do before the fact that I had just bashed my head on the floor started to call for my attention, prompting me to roll about on the floor and place both hands on where I, a large lump was already swelling on the back of my skull. Ah, uh, Taki, are you, well, I didn't hurt you too bad, did I? I was a bit too busy being in pain and getting my act together to answer right away. As I slowly composed myself, I got back on my knees. I started looking about, intent on focusing on Candy and my current dilemma with her, to tell her off or politely refuse her or something. But before I could address her, I looked on ahead of where I currently knelt and saw something that grabbed my full attention. Uh, Candy? What are those? At these words, Candy's followed my own gaze, at which her face fell with displeasure. That's... that's something you shouldn't have seen. As I processed these words, my eyes went wide with realization. Wait. You mean, is that what you and Dad have been working on? Well, I... But my focus was no longer on candy. Ooh! Instead, my full attention was now focused on pieces of equipment that now stood practically staring at me in the face. The things I was looking at certainly didn't look like your standard gaming console. Instead, each machine in question looked like a raised circular platform with what could almost have been a car seat straightened out mounted on it by a thick pole. The seat had a harness of some kind and a, and a helmet on top, and as I moved to study the twin platforms, I noticed that each of them had a pair of high-tech gloves, as well as a similar set of booties wired to the straightened sheets. Sheet, seat, stop! On a whole, the twin machines gave the impression of having been made from whatever stuff my dad had been able to get his hands on, like he had looted a salvage yard for most of it. On top of that, both platforms were standing alone in the corner of the lab, making it certain that no prying eyes would ever catch sight of them from the door. They were almost hooked up to several computers, and while I'm no expert from the information being displayed on the screens, it looked like they were running some kind of diagnostic on both machines. What are they? What do they do? Taki, please, I, I can't tell you. I'm under contract and, uh-oh. It was obvious that Candy was upset about this, but I was no longer focusing or, or even thinking about her. My full attention was on those two machines before me. And as I continued to study them, I began to realize what they were. And when I did, my lips curled up into the greatest smile. Virtual reality, huh? But this setup looked like a full body immersion. Something I'd never had a chance to try myself. And given how hyped my dad was about this project, the VR system I was looking at was something even far beyond what I had seen. Something... That's right. It's virtual reality. Congrats, Taki. Ah! These instants, the instant these words sounded, I was nearly jumped clean out of my skin. Having already realized that I was in big trouble, I quickly looked about, and felt like a little kid that had been caught with his hand in the proverbial cookie jar when I saw my dad, cleaned up and wearing an unhappy scowl on his face. And this is why I didn't want to leave him in the lab. 
At this point, Candy walked up to my father. At some point after our fall, she had straightened up her clothes and shoved her breast back into her shirt and buttoned it enough so it looked like much like she had before trying to take me. I'm... I'm sorry, Professor. Taki and I were talking, and so on, when we tripped and fell. I was trying to help him, but I hadn't realized that we'd wandered so close to the Imagine V units. While I was marveling over the fact that Candy could bluff so effectively, I put on a, such a flawless, penitent sinner routine. Dad was just smiling in reassurance. Like I said, Candy, my son can be quite the handful. <sighs> Seriously, now I know what my folks must have gone through when I was growing up. So this is your... S oh, that's not... That's not my dad! <laughs> so this is your special project, right? A new VR system? Dad made a face that made it clear that he was caught between the urge to scold me and desire to bring out about his creation. And he so he compromised and went about doing both at the same time. Whew! Well, all of that fucking happened.